Oh, is this the lecture hall with Seymour Hirsch? I, I just, I'm looking for the one with Seymour Hirsch because it's a policy and press hall event. So shouldn't we be talking about the Nord Stream since that's the biggest story of the century? And you guys, you know, I'm sorry. I mean, you have the executive editor of the New York Times there who came out with a phony story to try and block Seymour Hirsch. It just, it's just kind of funny how that happened, you know? I mean, did you even acknowledge Seymour Hirsch? All of you are executive editors of papers that broke Pentagon, Me Lai, Watergate. Is this the same papers or not? I mean, is there anything you've gotten right in the last 20 years? Or am I mistaken about that? I mean, it's just kind of funny because Iraq, wrong. Syria, wrong. Russiagate, really wrong. Okay, I mean, the list goes on and on. So the last thing you could do to try and actually fix your reputation is acknowledge that through leaks, we had to find out that Zelensky was going to bomb Moscow on the anniversary. I mean, if you're so impartial, shouldn't you at least say, right, that Zelensky was going to bring us on the verge of World War III? That seems pretty fair. While Julian Assange rots in prison, all of you've got, you know, fat checks because he's in jail for doing your job. And you know what? Tucker Carlson ain't no Seymour Hirsch, but he did something you guys are scared to do. Speak the truth and actually be critical of the war, which is why he was actually fired from Fox, because you are all cowards, every single one of you. None of you have actually had any relevancy. And you know what? The mainstream press is now dying. Nobody's ever going to listen to you again. You have no credibility with the public. The only people who care about what you have to say are elite assholes who have nothing productive to say anymore. And it's dying off. So will you at least say something either about Nord Stream or Ukraine or the fact that Zelensky brought us to the verge of World War III and the only reason we knew about that was through leaks? I'm, go ahead, it's a free speech event, right? You guys are the press. Let's say something here. Mr. Khan, come on, you know, you're the executive head of the New York Times, you know? I'm just trying to get into some good trouble here, man. Ooh, listen, Karen, get out of my face for a second. I gotta talk to these gentlemen. <clears throat> well, I just wanna hear what they have to say. Go ahead, I'm done. Wait your turn. You're not going to tell him to you. Come. Wait your turn. You could, you could project if we can't. I think it's important to hear everybody's point of view. Yeah. So thank you. All right. I do think that we need to give uh, our moderator a chance to ask other questions. We're on the verge of World War III. We're not doing that. We're not doing that. Let's go. Let's go. Say something about this bombing. We blew up the Nord Stream pipeline. Listen, don't stand there while there are people rotting in prison. Nobody said anything about Uhuru, right? The socialists who are in jail for being critical of this war? God damn it! At least say something about the people in jail for being critical of this war. They don't deserve to be in prison right now! Oh, hello, you. How are you? I'm Shai Bashem Dash. Double honors unto the apostles and elders of great millstone who do rule well. Shalom to you of us who are hopeful. Shalom to the elect. Now, although this video is more about why Tucker Carlson, like his corporate news colleague, Don Lemon, were fired from their respective posts last week, almost like a bad game of musical chairs, I had to open with that clip of activist uh, journalist Jose Vega accusing representatives of the New York Times, the uh, Washington Post, the LA Times, Reuters, and uh, Columbia Law School of being government shills in their uh, failing to report the truth and because of their inability to tell it like it is. Mainstream media on a whole's credibility with the public is all but dead. I know Jose Vega is from the Bronx. Not sure what tribe Jose is from. All that fire in the spirit, he's definitely an Israelite. We know exactly what house Karen and Ken were from, that's for sure. In any event, what you're seeing with all these examples of censorship and zero tolerance by the elite is exactly what is coming down the turnpike with a famine of the word and what is getting ready to happen as far as anybody speaking truth to power like we hopeful elect men of the Lord. Amos 8 and 11, it says this, 
Behold, the days come, saith the Lord Power Yahweh, that I will send a famine in the land, not a famine of bread nor a thirst for water, but of hearing the words of the Lord. The Most High did the same thing in the uh, antiquities. What you're seeing now is the Lord getting ready to revisit the shutting up of the word, if you will, in these end times. I mean, there used to be something called the freedom of the press, and if even recognized journalists are being censored and tossed out on their air, then what about the men of the Lord preaching and teaching the destruction of Babylon and an end to Esau's kingdom on the World Wide Web and in every street corner? Uh, Second Ezra 6 and 20, and it reads, And when the world that shall begin to vanish away shall be finished, then will I shew these tokens. The book shall be opened before the firmament, i.e. the uh, internet, and they shall see all together, which speaks to the dispensation of the gospel, the good news that we Israelites have a savior, deliverer and redeemer in Yahweh Shai. Uh, this truth coming out via the men of the Lord, starting with Rabbi Abba Bivens, the understanding of the Bible and its dark sayings being made clear upon tables, the apocrypha coming back into play and regaining its validity, so to speak. I mean, how could you uncanonize what was deemed canon anyways? Uh, the unlocking of iconic books, at least the understanding of them. The same books Esau thought he was hiding his secrets in because they refused to teach us, wouldn't allow us to, or, or spoiled us to a point where we were inclined not to read them. The, uh, the spreading of the word and this truth over the world wide web. Again, uh, Yahweh the Father of Spirits and also the revealer of secrets. Uh, Daniel 2 and 47 is the precept. Promised that there would come a time again, these instances would be done away with. Amos 8 and 12, and they shall wander from sea to sea and from the north even to the east. They shall run to and fro to seek the word of Yahweh and shall not find it. Again, speaking to the antiquities when we Israelites were scattered from sea to sea, ocean to ocean, from the Mediterranean to the Atlantic, from the Caribbean to the Pacific, we were scattered throughout the land, throughout all nations, and the word of the Lord was not going out. Proverbs uh, 29 and 18 says this, where there is no vision, the people perish, but he that keepeth the law, happy is he. Vision meaning prophecy, prophecy meaning foresight. Ergo, a look into the judgment of the Heavenly Father and what is getting ready to take place according to his will. Uh, the time is coming when Yahweh will withdraw his prophets, the men of the Lord, who day in and day out are putting their lives on the line to bring you this truth. That is the famine of the word. Trust and believe by then his election will be sealed. Uh, Amos 9 and 10 is the precept there. Maybe I'll close with that. Uh, going back to the exchange between Vivek Ramaswamy and uh, Don Limon, my last video. In hindsight, what, what stands out to me is all the emphasis being placed on America's Second Amendment right to bear arms. Every time the elections roll around, it's, it always seems to be the hot topic of discussion anyways, but nobody with a platform in the corporate arena worth giving a damn anyways, is uh, speaking loudly about the First Amendment and American so-called right to speak freely. And of course they're not, which is the first indication that mainstream news has been bought, paid for, and under the control of the powers that shouldn't be. Uh, something we at Great Millstone have been telling you for a very, 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 very long time. The press as it sits today used to be about keeping the spotlight on the government's every mediation and decision since everything they do is supposed to be on the behalf of we the people. Like uh, Jose alluded to, why are we the last to know? Uh, the second indication the press is a myth is the millions of dollars in subscriptions the Fox Corporation has lost, basically tossed out the window by firing Tucker Carlson, as if they didn't anticipate the damage they would be doing by losing their greatest, greatest asset in the uh, corporate news arena. What happened there? The uh, bean counters, are, are they on break? Now, they, they say it was an, an, in all fairness, they say it was an amicable split, but how amicable? Uh, let's go to Isaiah 29 and 15, because it says this, Woe unto them that seek deep to hide their counsel from the Lord Yahweh, and the works are in the dark, and they say, Who seeth us and who knoweth us? Speaking to the hidden counsel of the wicked, the, uh, the Illuminati, who works on the left-hand side of the Lord. Uh, the elite globalists and international bankers, the men who rule this world behind a curtain of secrecy, who conspire and lay in wait, the same men who destroyed we as a people and a nation. Psalm uh, 94 and 7, yet they say, Yahweh shall not see, 
neither shall the power of Jacob regard it. Yahweh says they in turn for their devilry, if that's even a word, they will be destroyed. Not to mention all the money they spent uh, in trying to keep we so-called people of color dumb, deaf, and blind. Why are we the last to know? Because what they're getting ready to do, we so-called sheeple and goyim want no parts of it. I got three sayings worthy of mention in front of me here. Then I'll go to the uh, to an article on one of the many reasons why they say Mr. Carlson lost his job. And then I'll add some scripture for context, of course, which is why we're here. And then we'll close out. Now, here's a quote I'm sure you've heard that goes, the pen is mightier than the sword. The government knows this all too well, especially as it applies to the power of the press. There's a quote attributed to uh, George Herbert Walker Bush, that's uh, George Sr., from a print, print, Salakia, print media interview. Now, some argue there's no proof of him ever making it, but in any event, it goes, if the American people ever find out what we have done, they would chase us down the street and lynch us. Some say he was speaking to Iraq Gate. I mean, look it up for those of you not in the know. Or some others say the uh, the Iran Contra scandal, speaking to the CIA's involvement in the uh, Nicaraguan Contras cocaine trafficking. Uh, Freeway Ricky Ross, the dealer, not the rapper, said he made well over six hundred million dollars from all the dope he trafficked on behalf of the U.S. government in facilitating that uh, conflict which fueled the drug explosion in America, directly responsible for the crack epidemic of the late 80s, early 90s. Others say he was referring to the JFK assassination when he himself was the director of the CIA. Isaiah 47 and 10, For thou hast trusted in thy wickedness, thou hast said, None seeth me. Again, speaking to the elite money handlers of the world, their uh, secret societies, their sororities and fraternal orders, America's covert operatives like the CIA, the FBI, the NSA, and their uh, secret agendas they institute, of course, via Hegelian dialectics, problem, reaction, solution, and ordo ab chaos, order through chaos. Thy wisdom and thy knowledge, it has perverted thee, speaking to Esau's arrogant nature and uh, pride in self. Never does he in all his power and his glory <laughs> Acknowledge the true power and the true glory of the Heavenly Father. And that was said in thine heart, I am and none else beside me. In any event, the point of the matter is if all the uh, common citizen had to do was read today's paper to find out just how devilish their selected officials really are. Forget rallying to riot on January 6th, which was an orchestrated event, by the way. America would be on fire tonight. Uh, Second Ezra 16 and 70 is the precept there. Uh, and it says this. For there shall be in every place and in the next cities a great insurrection upon those that fear the Lord Yahweh. Insurrection meaning a violent uprising against authority or government. In this case, the supreme government of Yahweh Ba Shem Yahweh Shai, starting with the elect men of the Lord, prophesying and teaching his truth, speaking to Jacob's trouble and the, uh, the persecution of Israel, which is going to hit Babylon first, but it will eventually affect the whole world over because of Israel being scattered. And an example of that is the implementation of the RFID, micro CHI to the P. Verse 71, they shall be like madmen sparing none, but still spoiling and destroying those that fear. Yahweh, uh, madmen speaking to the federal agents and the uh, government appointed task force charged to monitor we men of the Lord. Everybody is going to be terrorized due to us being demonized, slanderized, a new word, slanderized and uh, deemed as terrorists. This is when the uh, persecution and the famine of the word really begins, when martial law is finally implemented. For those that have eyes to see and ears to hear, you see what's happening in Chicago with the closing of those Walmart stores. What are they planning to do with them, I wonder? Uh, Sirach 39 and 28 is a great precept there. Truth be told, all of this government censorship of the press is it's really delaying the inevitable. The last quote um, I have here in front of me is by Marcus Garvey, and it says this, the pen is mightier than the sword, but the tongue is mightier than them both put together. And I brought that out so I could bring this out, Proverbs 18 and 21. Uh, Death and life are in the power of the tongue, and they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. 
The gist of the matter is words before knives, guns, grenades, missed opportunities, uh, nixed promotions and careers can be life or death. But the point to be made here is where there's life, there's hope. Hope is what we find in the scriptures. Life is what we find in the word and in the belief in Yahweh Shai. In that same book, though, Yahweh Shai's sacrifice in bringing us this truth tells you what death in having hope and belief can be about. Uh, Yahweh deals in balance and duality. Somebody obviously took a page out of the Lord's Playbook last week by firing these two talking heads who has the most to lose is where you really should be looking. Uh, let me read you this small blurb that I, uh, I found in Zero Hedge addressing one of the reasons they canceled Tuck. And uh, I think I'll close with that same script I used last video. Listen to this. Um, another rumor is that Rupert Murdoch, who is the uh, media exec that owns Fox, the rumor is his ex fiance said Carlson was a quote unquote messenger from God at a dinner, which freaked out old Rupert. Uh, Murdoch and Smith called off their two week engagement because Smith had told people Carlson was a, again, quote unquote, messenger from God. Murdoch had seen Carlson and Smith discuss religion firsthand. In late March, Carlson had dinner at Murdoch's Bel Air Vineyard with Murdoch and Smith, according to the source. During dinner, Smith pulled out a Bible and started reading passages from the book of Exodus. The source said, Rupert just sat there and stared. The source said, a few days after the dinner, Murdoch and Smith called off the wedding. By taking Carlson off the air, Murdoch was also taking away his exit's favorite show. Now, man, there's so much to say, but um, in the consideration of time, let's just keep it short and straight to the point. But I will say this, now I get why Tucker Carlson showed up at the Apostles Camp some years ago. You can best believe any ideas he had to do a segment on this thing of ours got vetoed by those higher up. Galatians 4 and 16. We'll close out with that. Am I therefore become your enemy because I tell you the truth? But of course, from what I understand, the uh, Pentagon thinks so. <laughs> so does uh, Big Pharma. Of course, the left do and any Soros appointed lackey for that matter. Again, despite all the money Tucker Carlson has made for the elites behind Fox News all these years. When you no longer fit the program, forget years dedicated, forget seniority. You are expendable, my friend. Truth be told, Fox can recoup the monies they've lost, but what they can't do is replace their reliable viewers. Am I therefore become your enemy because I tell you the truth? Well, here we are giving you the truth for free. You see what they've been trying to do to us. Call hello, Yahweh Bashem, Yahushai Bashem, Akak, with Dash through the power and spirit. Hope you were edified. Double honors unto the apostles and elders of Great Millstone who teach us 100% truth and rule well. Salutations to the hopeful elect. Remember, no test, no jabbing, damn sure. Don't take that C to the H to the I to the P. Shalom, Yasharala. Shalom to the elect. Tucker Carlson, tonight, sometimes you wonder just how filthy and dishonest our news media are. You'll be in the shower and you'll think they're bad, but how bad are they? Well, here's one measure of their badness. You can try this at home. Ask yourself, is any news organization you know of so corrupt that it's willing to hurt you on behalf of its biggest advertisers? Anyone who do that is obviously Pablo Escobar level corrupt and should not be trusted. What would that look like? That level of corruption. Well, imagine that the Trump administration had made it mandatory for American citizens to buy my pillow. That's one of Fox News' biggest advertisers. Imagine the administration declared that if you didn't rush out and buy at least one my pillow, and then at least another booster pillow, you would not be allowed to eat out. You couldn't re-enter your own country. You couldn't have a paying job. My pillow, they told you with a straight face, was the very linchpin of our country's public health system. Now imagine as they told you that, that Fox, as a news organization, endorsed it, amplified the government's message. Imagine if Fox News attacked anyone who refused to buy my pillow as an ally of Russia, as an enemy of science. And then imagine that Fox kept up those libelous attacks, even as evidence mounted that my pillow caused heart attacks, fertility problems, and death. If Fox News did that, what would you think of Fox News? Would you trust us? Of course you wouldn't. You would know that we were liars. Thank heaven Fox News never did anything like that. But the other channels did. 
The other channels took hundreds of millions of dollars from big pharma companies, and then they shilled for their sketchy products on the air. And as they did that, they maligned anyone who was skeptical of those products. At the very least, this was a moral crime. It was disgusting, but it was universal. It happened across the American news media. They all did it. So at this point, the question isn't who in public life is corrupt, too many to count. The question is, who is telling the truth? There are not many of those. <laughs>